Okay, I hope that was a good experience. Let's take a look at the first one. Here we're importing lab 150 underscore 2, which was our vowel counter. Actually, it did count Y. Doesn't matter, because it's good experience either way. So in my main, I'm seeing if I was giving an I was given an argument on the command line. If not, there's an index error and I'm asking for it from the user. If I still don't have one, then we'll use my default cats.txt. Now I'm going to count vowels in file and give the report. If there's an error, I will catch an IO error as info and I will print that. If there is an error, I will catch an OS error as info and I will print that. Up here in count vowels and file, here's my vowel count that I initialized to zero. I open my file, I go through each line, and I push that line into my count vowels function in my count vowels library, which I renamed from the lab 150 underscore two. All very readable. And I pass it back. You notice also that if we have an error, I do a sys exit of a one, which indicates an error. Anything but a zero indicates an error. A person really should provide documentation on what the numbers mean that come back. Um, Unix reads those exit codes. This is considered the best method. There is also an exit call, and it calls sys exit. The next one, number two, I gave you a do swap library that has in it a do swap function. And I cautioned you, don't look at that code. Don't believe in that code. To do a good job of this swapping, you really need regular expressions. And we're not doing that in this class. In my solution, I want to introduce shootle. You didn't need it, but I'm using it here. Let me show you in my main. With shootle, which stands for shell utilities, I can copy a whole file. I want to do my work on cats.txt. And so I am copying it to cats.2txt so I don't accidentally mess up the cats.txt because I like to regenerate it to you, to students. Now I'm going to call my swapper function on cats.2text. I'm going to change all my cats for dogs and all my dogs for cats. Well, they are the same length. That's real good. Otherwise, that do swap would not work well at all. OK, so I do the try except of my OS error. And in the try, I do the with. This time, I'm reading it for R+. That means I'm going to read and write. So I open it. I read it. I have the whole text in file. Oh, <gasps> dangerous. And I'm going to call my do swap, do swap. My apples for my oranges. My apple is my cat. My orange is my dog. So I'm swapping them. Now here I'm using a seek call to go to the beginning. I'm trunking, truncating what's there. And then I'm writing my new text. So I have done that swap. And the important thing is that you got that experience with the try and the with and the as. Collecting the error. OK, then I'm going to do the swap of my www.txt, which doesn't exist. Here we see no such file or directory. But then I'm cat 
which is the same in your window systems as typed. It's going to just spit out that text that we have here. Dogs who tease the cat. Silly dogs. Rather than the other way around. Well, there are several things wrong with that. We have the file that we're changing is open a long time in this unknown situation. Besides that, we put the whole file in memory. So let's do a more professional job. Again, we're going to use our Shootle library, but also there is a temp file library. And if you have to do this for your job, you want to be aware of it because it is murder about a job like this. Now I'm importing OS. What do I want that for? Aha, uh -huh. yes, we need that OS. Everything here looks the same. It's our swapper is different. The signature is the same. Now then, I am going to open temp file name temporary file. I am opening a temporary file. There are quite a few things in that library you might want to look at if you really need all this. But this is a real good one because it is just like opening a file except that it chooses the file for you on your disk that does not have its name clash with anything that's there already. By default, when it closes, it's going to delete itself. Well, you may want that, but I don't. Here we're saying delete equals false, so it just sits there until we do something with it. And that's my temp file, open, object, open for writing. Now I'm opening my read file in the regular way with another width. And I am going through each line, doing the swap, writing the swap line as bytes, taking care of the encoding. If you have a problem, that's where you go looking. Okay, when I'm done writing all that, the temp file. Now it is closed but not gone. Here I am renaming it to the file name I want it to be. That happens fast and that's what we want to have happen. So that's a professional way to do it. All right, that's it to the next lab. I'll see you then.